okay similarly cos of a minus cos of b was seen as cos of a into cos of b plus sin of a into sin of b then further i explain to you that tan of a minus b will become equal to sin of a minus b divided by cos of a minus b right tan of a minus b is equal to sin of a minus b by cos of a minus b this i can write it as sin a cos b minus cos a sin b whole divided by then i will have cos a into cos b my uh, plus sin a into sin b right i will have this so now once i have this then i can now further simplify stuff and then write them this way i can write them this way i can divide the whole thing by cos a cos b so if i divide the whole thing by cos a cos b i'll get sin a cos b by cos a cos b minus cos a sin b by cos a cos b whole divided by cos a cos b by cos a cos b plus sin a sin b divided by cos a cos b so when i work this out here you see cos b cos b get cancelled here cos a cos a gets cancelled here the whole thing gets cancelled here nothing gets cancelled so i have sin a by cos a which is uh, tan of a minus i have sin b by cos b which is uh, tan of b divided by 1 minus this is tan a tan b tan a tan b so i get tan a minus tan b whole divided by 1 minus tan a tan b right so this is what is uh, tan of a minus b hmm? so this is what is tan of a minus b so this is right now we are all learning so please don't look at things as science maths and all those things always try to prove try to prove stuff if somebody says that you know v is equal to u plus at your answer your question should be not this your question should be why can i prove it okay so your approach be it physics be it chemistry be it maths be it biology your approach should be to think okay how can i prove this particular stuff okay that is where learning will happen anyway so you have tan of a plus b is equal to tan a plus uh, tan b divided by 1 minus tan a tan b okay so like this you can keep working then i had i think given you homework of cot of a plus b so cot of a plus b will be like this cot of a plus b will be cos of a plus b by sin of a plus b so when you work this out it becomes cos a cos b minus sin a sin b whole divided by sin a cos b plus cos a sin b now because i want everything in terms of cot i will divide everything by this so when i divide everything by that i'll get cot a cot b minus 1 divided by then i will get here i will get cot b here i'll get cot a so cot a plus cot b this is equal to cot of a plus b okay now again i keep saying friends at this age the more you work the more you will be able to do it if you just look at it and keep thinking that you know most of you all read so reading is not enough you have to do when you do only then your abilities grow by reading your abilities don't grow you will be able to remember them short time but it is not about remembering them it is about doing it and then uh, remember and getting it done for a much longer time okay so if you are able to get it then i would just like to focus a little bit more attention 
I'll again repeat my aim is not to teach you the maths, but my aim is to teach you as much as it is required in the physics class, right? So maybe from the next class, I will start uh, doing physics. So maybe today will be my last class on uh, trigonometry, but then we'll be keeping on seeing trigonometry in different aspects as we keep working. So what I want you to do is I want you to understand that suppose you have sine of 90 plus theta. Can you try to expand these and write? I don't want to write it. First you do it, then I will do it. Cos, not cos. Cot of 90 plus theta. Cos of 90 minus theta. Hmm. So, can you complete these? So, sine of 90 plus theta will become sine 90 into cos theta plus cos 90 into sin theta. How much is sin 90 equal to 1? How much is cos 90 equal to 0? So do you see that this part will vanish? This part will also vanish because it is 1 and ultimately it will become equal to cos theta. So sin of 90 plus theta is equal to cos theta. Like that sin of 90 minus theta. Sin of 90 minus theta will become sin 90 into cos theta minus cos 90 into sin theta and you will see that this is also equal to cos theta. Similarly cos 90 plus theta cos 90 plus theta is equal to cos 90 into cos theta minus sin 90 into sin theta. Now cos 90 is how much? Zero sin 90 is how much? 1. So this part will vanish. This is 1. So it is equal to minus sin theta. So if you see cos of 90 plus theta is equal to minus sin theta. You will see when you substitute cos of 90 minus theta, you will get same as sin theta. Hmm? So tan of 90 plus theta is equal to sin of 90 plus theta by cos of 90 plus theta. So sin of 90 plus theta is equal to cos theta. Then cos of 90 plus theta is equal to minus sin theta. So do you see that it is equal to minus cot theta? Hmm? So tan of 90 minus theta will be simply equal to cot theta. So you must be capable of doing these kinds of things. Okay. Now, the moment you say sine 90 plus theta, now we can talk of sine 120. Hmm? So, we can talk of sine 120, we can talk of sine 150, we can talk of sine more than that also. Yeah, so let me ask you to fill up the table again. So, here I have sine values, here I have cos values. Here I have tan values, here I have cot values, here I have cosecant values, and here I have secant values. Now first I will put theta is equal to 0 degrees. Then I will put uh, 15, 15, then I will put 30, then I will put 45, then I will put 60, then I will put 75, then I will put 90. Hmm. Then I will put 105, then I will put plus 15, 130, then I will put 145, oh no 145 will be tough, this is not 130, it should be 120, 
120, then 135, then 150, then 165 and then 180. Yeah, so I want you to fill up the sine cos values for all these. I'll tell you how to find out. Okay, but I want you to understand that the moment we say trigonometry is coming from circular functions, we can now talk about trigonometric angles much greater than 90 degrees. Earlier, we were not able to talk in those lines. Okay, so sine 0 is 0, cos 0 is 1, tan 0, tan 0 is 0, cot 0 is infinity, cosecant 0 is also infinity, secant 0 is 1. Hmm? Now you know this, sine 15, how will you sign, find out sine 15? Last time you did, 50 can be written as either 60 minus 45 or it can be written as 45 minus 30. From this com concept of these compound angles you can find out say for example if you are interested to know what is uh, tan 15 so tan 15 is equal to tan of 45 minus 30 so that will become equal to tan 45 minus tan 30 divided by 1 plus tan 45 into tan 30 so tan 45 is how much 1 uh, 1 Cot uh, tan, uh, tan 30 is how much? 1 by root 3 divided by 1 plus tan 45 is 1. Tan 30 is 1 by root 3. So now when I take my LCMs and then work with it, I will get it is equal to root 3 minus 1 by root 3 plus 1. So tan 15 is equal to this much. Root 3 minus root 3 minus 1 divided by root 3 plus 1. Okay. So from here, tan 75, tan, oh, I put it in the place of sine. Yeah, this chart is very, very important for us. We would like to make this chart if possible daily once so that we will remember how to do it. So it is root 3 minus 1 by root 3 plus 1. Now cot will be the reciprocal of that. So root 3 plus 1 by root 3 minus 1. Yeah. Now, can you try to figure figure out the others also? Yeah, please try to complete this chart. Yeah, please try to complete this chart. So sine 30, sine 30 is 1 by 2. Sine 45 is 1 by root 2. Sine 60 is root 3 by 2. Sine 75, we will find out. Sine 90 is 1. So sine 15, I can find cos uh, 0 is this much. Cos 30 is root 3 by 2. 1 by root 2. 1 by 2. This is 1. So tan 30, tan 15, you found out. Cot 15. Cot 15 will be same as tan 75. So tan 75 here will be root 3 plus 1 divided by root 3 minus 1. So this value will become root 3 minus 1 divided by root 3 plus 1. See, for tan 75, this will become plus here. So it will become plus here and minus here. So that is what I have done. Okay. Yeah. So I found these out. Then tan, uh, tan 90. Tan 90 is sin 90 by cos 90. So that is infinity. So this will become 0. Then again, uh, oh, here how can cos both cannot be 0 cos 90 is 0 so cosecant is 1 secant is infinity yes so carefully please fill this thing up okay so tan tan 30 tan 30 is 1 by root 3 so this is root 3 this is 1 by root 3 this is root 3 then cosecant cosecant is coming 1 upon sine so that is 2 so this is 2 by root 3 so here 60 60 will be 2 by root 3 this will be 2. Then again, hmm. so these are all the ones known. Now let's look at it. Sin 120, sin 120. Sin 120 
will become sin 90 plus 30. So sin 90 plus 30 will become cos 30. Now cos 30, cos 30 is how much? Cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So here this will be root 3 by 2. This will become minus sin 30. So minus 1 by 2. So tan will become minus 1 by root 3. Hmm? Now cot will become minus root 3. Now cosecant, cosecant is 1 by sin. So it is 2 by root 3. Now secant, secant is minus 2. Hmm? So like this now, you please try to fill it up. So this one will become, this is 90 plus 30. This will be 90 plus 45. So now you can fill this up. So this is 75. 75 is 45 plus 30. Then you can now fill this up. Hmm? So this is 90 plus 15. So sine, sine, uh, sine 15, if we can find out, then we'll be able to do a lot of these. Yeah, so please try to fill this up. 90 plus 45, this will be 90 plus 60. This will be this. So then this is 90 plus 90. So sine 0, sine 0 is minus, sine 180 is minus 1. Uh, sorry, sine 180 is 0. Cos 180, cos 180 is minus 1. Tan 180, tan 180 sine by cos, so that is 0. Cot 180, cot 180 is infinity. Then cosecant, cosecant is 1 by sine, so it is infinity. Secant is equal to minus 1. Hmm? So now you are getting the values for cos of 180 degrees. So now, I mean, basically, you see, if you work on it this way, you can fill it up. Uh, sine 60, sine 60 is same as cos 60. Cos 60 is cos of 60. Cos of 60 is 1 by 2. So this is 1 by 2. This is minus root 3 by 2. This is uh, sine by cos. Sine by cos means minus 1 upon root 3. This will become minus root 3. Then again, this will become cosecant. Cosecant is 1 upon sine. So that is 2. Secant is minus 2 by root 3. Okay. So like this, now please try to fill up each one of them. Please try to fill it up. Hmm. So let's see cos of 40, 135. Sine 135 will be cos. So that is 1 by root 2. This will be minus 1 by root 2. Tan will be minus 1. Cot will be minus 1. Cosecant will be uh, root 2. Secant will be minus root 2. Okay. So except for uh, this 15, once you fill this up, now you will be able to fill up the rest of it. Please make a neat chart of it. And then please make sure that you are trying to do this every day. Don't try to remember this. Remembering this is not possible. Nobody can remember it. What you can do is you can work on it every day so that you gain speed. Once you gain speed, then things will be very easy for you. Okay. So uh, this is a very, very important thing. I'll just illustrate one or two of them. So I'll try to help you find out sine 45, sine 75, cos 75 and 165. Yeah. So here it is sine 75. So sine 75 is equal to sine 45 plus 30. So that is equal to sine of uh, 45 into cos 30 plus cos of 45 into sine 30. So sine 45 is 1 by root 2. Cos 30 is root 3 by 2. Plus cos 45 is 1 by root 2. Sine 30 is 1 by 2. So when I work this out, so it is root 3 plus 1 by 2 root 2. Okay. So let me go there and then fill it up. So what is it equal to? Root 3 plus 1 by 2 root 2. So this is root 3 plus 1 by 2 root 2. Hmm. Ha. Then again, the moment I know this, I can find this out also. But that is not possible. This is possible. So minus root 3 plus 1 by 2 root 2. Yeah. Then again, cosecant. Uh, secant. Secant is reciprocal of that. So it is 2 root 2 by minus root 3 plus 1. Yeah. Then let me find out the other one. Cos. Cos of 75. Cos of 75 is equal to cos of 45 minus 30. So 45 minus, sorry, 45 plus 30. So that is cos 45, 1 by root 2, cos 30, root 3 by 2, minus 1 by root 2 into 1 by 2. So that is root 3 minus 1 by 2 root 2. So cos of 75 is root 3 minus 1 by 2 root 2. <coughs> so now I can find out everything. So this one, understand? that cos 75 is sine 15. So it will become root 3 minus 1 by 2 root 2. Cos of 15 is same as sine of 75. 
so this will become root 3 plus 1 by 2 root 2 yeah so now i'll be able to fill up the whole thing hmm? then again you see uh, cos cos of 105 will be minus sign so minus root 3 plus 1 by 2 root 2 now cos of 105 will be same as uh, sine of 105 will be same as cos of 15 yeah so cos of 15 is root 3 plus 1 by 2 root 2 so here i'm making a mistake here it is not plus 1 it should be minus of root 3 minus 1 hmm so now here i have 165 165 is 90 plus 75 so sine 165 is same as cos 75 so cos 75 is root 3 minus 1 root 3 minus 1 by 2 root 2 so now i can fill up all this entire table okay so please take time fill up this entire table and this is like a medicine it has to be taken daily so what you should be able to do is daily for the next at least four or five days you should be able to uh, fill up this table every day every day please fill it up don't look at the old one and then fill it up it's of no use every day write write sine of a plus b equal to hmm? write sine of a plus b equal to then sine of a minus b equal to then cos of a plus b equal to then cos of a minus b equal to then try to substitute in these and try to fill up each of those values okay so now i have done up to 180 so you can take it up as a challenge and fill it up if you've seen i am taking angles in the 15 15 every 15 i have taken so now you can fill it up all the way up to 360 and make one day chart first day you two days you work only on this then the next day you go from 180 to 360 and then alternate days work on each one of them till it is all set in your mind you should if somebody asks you what is the value you should be able to say quickly okay now uh, cosecant here we can find out cosecant is reciprocal of sine so 2 root 2 by root 3 minus 1 secant is reciprocal of cos 2 root 2 by root 2 plus 1 yeah so like that we can fill it out so this is tan is 1 1 this is root 2 root 2 yeah so now cosecant cosecant will become 2 root 2 by root 3 plus 1 this one will become 2 root 2 by root 3 minus 1 yeah so like that i can fill it up so please make sure that you are filling it up on a day to day basis every day please make sure that you are writing these values okay now once you go there i think your comfort levels will be very very high and then you will see that you will be able to do a lot of things very easily. So I will just show this to you and I will be wait. I will wait for a minute. After 10.5, we will go to the next concept. In this, some errors may be there. So you work it out for yourself. Uh, I can't see any errors, but you please work it out for yourself and make sure that you are understanding this full thing. okay so i waited more than what i told you so if this is all done then let's move on so next what i would like you to do or like you to understand is that we can draw graphs for even trigonometric functions we can draw graphs and what i would like you to do is i would like you to imagine i would like you to imagine that suppose you have this you have this at time t is equal to zero this uh, radius was here okay 
so radius is here so projection when you throw arrow the projection is here so the projection is here hmm so what happens is now the radius is slowly going this side the projection has uh, uh, the radius has gone here so now the projection has slowly gone up yeah so the projection has slowly gone up now the projection is going all the way here so the projection has slowly gone up and it's gone to the maximum value now when the radius is going this side the projection is again decreasing so the projection is again decreasing when the radius has come here the projection has come become zero now that it is increasing on the opposite side so now it is increasing on the opposite side and this is how the graph for sin theta looks okay on one side you have the maximum maximum is at 90 degrees that is at pi by 2 this is at pi by 2 then this is at minus 3 pi by 2 sorry plus 3 pi by 2 this is at 5 pi by 2 so for odd values odd values it takes the maximum value on either side yeah so this is 1 this is minus 1 this is 0 this is pi this is 2 pi this is 3 pi this is 4 pi remember i told you we won't be working with degrees anymore so we have to constantly keep thinking it takes little time unless you practice it won't come okay at the same time you will think that you have not understood it but it is not that you have not understood it basically you have to understand that degrees we will not work with degrees anymore okay so as the radius rotates this way the trigonometric uh, function sin theta keeps changing okay now you see that do you see that this is a cyclic function or this looks cyclic it's repetitive first thing is do you see that it is a continuous graph you did not have to lift your pen to draw it you see you can have simply draw this like this so you did not have to lift your pen because you did not have to lift your pen it's a continuous graph yeah and it oscillates between 1 and minus 1 2 it oscillates between 1 and minus 1 what is oscillation oscillation that is that it moves and does it change in a linear manner no it doesn't change in a linear manner and you can talk about this function on this side also it goes like this okay so it oscillates it is periodic this is such a function which repeats itself is called a periodic function periodic function when a graph looks the same thing repeating repeating itself it's called a periodic function and how frequently does it repeat what is seen here will again be seen here will again be seen here so this time this time interval from here to here is called one period this time interval from here to here is called one period so what is the periodicity of this function of sine function so the periodicity is 2 pi ha huh? that is every 2 pi it repeats itself yes obviously every 2 pi it completes one full circle and then it reaches here right after 2 pi from here to here 2 pi it reaches here so now again it will go the same path again 4 pi again it will go the same path okay so it is important for you to understand these things Uh, friends all that i would want you to say is that i don't know if you guys have ever seen a picasso painting okay so i have seen a few picasso paintings after this class is over you may put online google search for picasso paintings and see them now when you see them you will up it all appear to be junk there is nothing in them he would have just drawn a cube and he would have drawn something a few lines and then people play pay a few million dollars for each of his paintings Now the reason why they pay is because they see something more than what you and me see. Same way, science, maths, maths is not just a few numbers. Maths has much, much, much more to it. Okay, maths has much, much, much more to it. And if to just to give you an example, you have seen this. Where have you seen this kind of a thing? You have seen this happening in waves. If I ask you, okay, tell me a wave. How will a wave look? 
you will see that a wave will look exactly like this right so it looks like a sine function right so it's look it looks like a sine graph so we have seen all these things we have seen in our real life just that we have to be able to teach ourselves to talk about it teach ourselves to consider it okay so i have explained to you periodic functions i have explained to you that the periodicity is 2 pi then it's a continuous graph so this is this is in maths there is one full chapter only on continuity you will learn about periodic functions again in maths okay but the whole thing is when the maths teacher teaches they will not be able to know the physics part so that is where we have to understand okay so this is about sin theta so this is a sin function uh, now a sin function this there's not enough space here but a sin function can is to be drawn on both sides so it looks like this and it looks like this okay so it exists on both sides so now if you place a place a mirror here you see that this side the left side and the right side are mirror images uh, if you place a mirror at zero uh, you will see that they are mirror, mirror images and i explained to you such functions are called odd functions odd functions odd functions means what i said f of minus x is equal to sorry f of minus x is equal to minus f of x these are odd functions this is the definition of an odd function an odd function is one where f of minus x is equal to minus f of x for example suppose i say i have x or x cubed so what is f of minus x minus x the whole cube so it is minus x cubed so if you see that my f of minus x is equal to minus f of x so this is an odd function so if you see sin is also an odd function okay now these all will be taught to you in maths again it is not my job to teach all these things i'm just telling you that yes friends look look at things in a different perspective then you will see there is so much the science is so much interesting okay so i hope you have understood about sin we have to mark it up okay this is just the beginning this is not the end though i may give you a question in your exam on some of these things that i have told you but don't worry if you know everything that i have told you you are ahead of your range okay so i am looking at it from that perspective now i am going to draw a cos function cos of 0 cos of 0 is 1 then it reduces when it comes to pi by 2 it reduces then again it goes down to minus then again it goes up and then again it goes down and then again it goes up so it does the same thing okay cos also looks exactly like sin just that uh, the sin graph you would have drawn from here the cos you have drawn from here hmm so this is what we say there is a phase difference there is a phase difference all these will be taught to you again okay all these will be taught to you again but as a student you should not wait for your teacher to teach so my whole aim is to motivate you to learn a lot of things you can learn all these things by yourself these are just terminologies there is nothing you see sin we drew from here now cos we are drawing from here so there is a phase difference okay this is again minus 1 plus 1 <clears throat> so this is 0 this is pi by 2 this is pi this is 3 pi by 2 this is 2 pi this is 5 pi by 4 do you see that this is also a continuous function ha huh? this is also a continuous function why is it continuous you didn't have to lift your pen to do draw this okay second 
do you see that this is also a periodic function? Huh? This is also a periodic function. Then what is the period? Period is that time interval after which it repeats itself. So it starts here. Next, when I see that it repeats itself here again. So what is this distance from here to here? It is 2 pi. So the time period for this is also 2 pi. T is equal to 2 pi. Now, do you see that if this is the x-axis, if this is the y-axis, now this side is a mirror image of this side or this side is a mirror image of the other side. Now you see there are mirror images, exactly mirror images. Such functions are called even functions. Such functions are called even functions. Okay. Sine was an odd function. Cos is an even function. For an even function, f of minus x is equal to f of x f of minus x is equal to f of x. This is a even function. See friends, these are all names given. So you can't say I don't understand this. There's nothing to understand. Just that this is name is called such a thing where f of minus x is equal to f of x is an even function. Where did you learn about this f of x? You learned about polynomials in your 10th standard. Hmm? So you learned about polynomials in your 10th standard, right? So that is where we are learning from okay so uh, these are called even functions all these you will again learn in maths don't worry about it just that we are uh, looking at it now in, in the physics class we are looking at it there's nothing else okay so if you understand it then i would like you to draw the graph of cos uh, this is cos is over cos also you see it oscillates between minus plus one and minus one the maximum value is plus one plus one the minimum value is minus one so it oscillates between plus one and minus one so cos oscillates between plus one and minus one okay next we will need to understand tan graph once we understand the tan graph we are done the other graphs you draw let us see so do you see the tan pi by two is uh, tan pi by 2. Tan pi by 2 is how much? Sin pi by 2 by cos pi by 2. Cos pi by 2 is 0. So tan pi by 2 is infinity. So it starts here. It goes here. And it goes here. And it goes here. So here 0 again. So it goes comes from here. Hmm. So this is how tan looks. And very clearly, do you see that you can't draw a tan without lifting the pen? This is zero. I know it, so I am doing it, okay? So don't worry how I did it, don't worry. I'm just telling you, this is the graph of tan theta. Hmm? Now, see, there is no way I can jump from this side to this side. Tan more than pi by 2 is negative. So, uh, so this is uh, pi. Then this is 3 pi by 2. And we keep going on. So this is minus pi by 2 and so on. Now you might be wondering, how can you go get negative angles? How can you get negative angles? Yeah, so I explained to you, look, angles are always measured anti-clockwise. So they are always measured this way. But I can measure this way also. So if I measure this way, it will be same as minus. So this way, anti-clockwise is plus, clockwise is minus. Okay, so when I go on the minus side, it is mean it means that I am taking uh, taking clockwise. Now understand because these are circular functions. If I am here, I will get this angle, or I will get this angle. So if I take plus, it will become two seventy something. If I take minus, it will become minus thirty. So like that, I can work. Hmm? Okay, so this is how the tan graph looks. So features about the tan graph is very clearly it is discontinuous. Hmm? Now I can't put any mirror here. Mirror here I can't put. Mirror here also I can't put because I can see this is a mirror image no problem. But on all these sides now the image of this will not be formed exactly where it, you would want it to be formed. So tan is neither an even function nor an odd function. Two tan theta is neither 
an even function nor an odd function okay then uh, discontinuous i said maximum value minimum value what's the maximum value of tan theta infinity what's the minimum value of tan theta minus infinity then it repeats itself but it repeats itself from here to here so this was how much uh, minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 again from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 again it will repeat so uh, what is the period of a tan function period of a tan function is pi not 2 pi period of a tan function so if i look at one period is from here to here then it again goes up again comes down here so it will be pi not 2 pi so sin theta is 2 pi cos theta is 2 pi tan theta is pi hmm? then yeah then do you see that here it is concave upwards here it is concave upwards here it is concave downwards here it is concave upwards concave downwards we did not do the same thing for sine theta here it is concave upwards here it is concave downwards so when we observe we have to observe all those things also so later on i will tell you when something will be concave upwards when something will be concave downwards hmm? Okay, you make a note of this. Hmm. Okay, so once you are done with it, I am also done with it. What I want you to understand is there are different types of equations. <clears throat> There are equations involving only x and we call them algebraic equations. Now there are equations involving x square. We call that quadratic equations. There are equations involving tan x. We call them trigonometric equations. Then there are logarithmic equations and there are other different kinds. Okay, exponential and so on. Now, uh, next, what I want to do is I want to teach you a little bit about logarithms. Okay, so uh, that is also very, very important for us to learn about logarithms. So I'll teach you a little bit about logarithms. So if you have understood this, it's fine. We'll move on. All these will be taught to you in your regular classes. Don't worry about it. I'm just trying to tell you that all these things are there so that some of you who are motivated can pick up some books and then try to read okay then so i will discuss about logarithms before that let me see if there are any comments and answer some of the comments which are there here there seem to be quite a few comments can you please again the first page put the first page for a second i can put sir can you please the table for a second i will put cos theta for first uh, i didn't understand the question sir tan of a minus b is wrong okay i will look at it again sir denominator must be one plus no problem i will look at it again sir are we le learning maths today no 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 we are learning only physics we are learning that much of maths which is important for us to learn physics okay so please this is not maths we are not uh, teaching you maths I have to teach you only physics. So we are learning only that much of maths which is needed, needed for physics. Okay. All this will be taught to you in maths and the maths people don't care for all these numbers. So in maths, they won't ask you what is the value for tan 15 and tan 30 and tan 75 and all that. All those questions we'll get only in physics. So after we finish uh, logarithms, we are going to learn vectors. Now when we learn vectors, we are going to use all these sine tan values. Now this chapter is the fourth or fifth chapter in uh, maths. So we can't wait till then. So we are learning all the maths that is required right now so that things will be, things will be easy.
okay so this table you wanted to see tan of 45 uh, minus this so has a numerator should have a minus i wrote something but i wrote here correctly so i i think you've not noticed it maybe i was explaining to you tan of a plus b anyway okay i'll just explain to you then you wanted to see the first slide here is the first slide oh yeah 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 it's wrong there's a plus here there is a plus here so i should put a plus here okay one more thing i will tell you uh, boys and girls please do not copy this is my notebook this is my notebook please do not copy from here okay now you ask me whatever you have you ask me doubts you have you ask me i may write anything here i may say i am writing a dog and write this way don't worry about it that is for me to understand this is my notebook my space okay so uh, yeah student has to do what teacher says teacher need not do what student says okay anyway okay so jokes apart so please work on it this way and uh, see my objective friends is not to teach you maths my objective is not to teach you anything my objective is to try to help you be independent now when you do physics tomorrow you will have difficulty saying that see in the very first chapter in physics if i ask you what is velocity well, so our first chapter after units and dimensions will be velocity uh, motion so when i teach you motion velocity i'll say it is the rate of change of displacement and i will write like this ds by dt now you will be thinking what is this ds by dt now ds by dt is the differential of the function now this is almost the last chapter in 11th last chapter in 11th so now you will tell me that sir we don't know ds by dt so i don't want you to come back and tell me you don't know ds by dt so before that i want to teach you ds by dt so that when i do ds by dt you don't tell me i have math problem okay so uh, i will ask you a question i will ask you a question saying that uh, that uh, i will ask you a question saying suppose i have a 5 meter long pole 5 meter long pole and it is casting a shadow of let us say uh, this is 4 meter long pole it is a casting a shadow 3 meter long uh, what is the at what angle is the sun or what is the elevation of the sun now i don't want you to tell me sir trigonometry i have forgotten no so uh, if this angle here is theta so i want you to quickly tell me tan theta is equal to 4 by 3 the other question that i will ask you is this a body a body is dropped dropped from a tall building a body is dropped from a tall building draw the graph showing distance traveled it is not a body it's a ball distance traveled with time so draw a graph showing the body distance traveled with time so at time t is equal to 0 the body is here so after some time the body comes here then it goes here bounce ball it's a ball so it will bounce then it will come back here then it will go you know it will lose some energy so it will go here come back here my question to you is will it be a straight line then you will say no sir maybe it will be like this because this is what you have seen then i will ask you why not like this because this is just a drawing no so why not like this sometimes concave upwards sometimes concave downwards here because it's all concave downwards 
so we are learning all the maths that we are learning is primarily to understand these kinds of questions okay and unfortunately in maths they don't teach us all this hmm? so all this you can do in maths also but the, we don't do math so we have physics and maths so in physics we learn some basic maths which will help us do physics later okay so it is expected that you have learned all those things i am not sure if you have learned logarithms before when i was a student we have learned it in my 9th standard we had a chapter on logarithms but nowadays i think they have removed it so i don't know okay anyway so let me just introduce logarithms to you today and then tomorrow next class also not tomorrow whenever it is next class also we will learn logarithms after that i think we will go to physics after that we want to talk about all these things after that yeah one class i will spend on telling you about this kvpy exam so you have an examination called kvpy which you will be writing in the month of november okay so i will tell you the syllabus and how to prepare for the kvpy exam so the next class we will work with logarithms the class after that i will discuss about kvpy and then we will come to units and dimensions which you have learnt in your 9th standard we will do that again and in little bit more detail than what you have learnt in your 9th standard after that it will all be physics you have learnt a part of it in your lower classes just that i'll be developing on whatever you have learnt in your lower classes so right now we are going to talk about logarithms okay so today i'll just give you the definition of logarithms okay before that i'll just show you the slide so that those of you who want to take snapshots can take and then uh, i will introduce logarithms next class we will do already your chemistry sirs may be talking about logarithms i'm not sure but they must be giving you numbers which are so difficult to calculate and they will say don't use uh, Uh, calculators so all these things they will teach you in detail when they do maths they'll do much slowly and they will work i am only doing that part which is important for me as far as physics is concerned so this is the graph of sin theta this is the graph of cos theta this is the graph of tan theta so i want you all to understand that only uh, i mean we need to draw graphs for everything we need to draw graphs so we should be able to understand so this is nothing so let's move on logarithms and let's work with logarithms now here suppose a power b is equal to c suppose a power b is equal to c then by definition log of c to the base a is equal to b hmm? this is by definition log of c to the base a is equal to b where a has to be a positive number not equal to 1 and c also is a positive number hmm? because i said positive number it can't be zero why can a not be equal to 1 because 1 power 10 is equal to 1 1 power 20 is also equal to 1 so it doesn't work out okay so if a power b is equal to c then log of c to the base a the way it is read 
log of c to the base a is equal to b hmm? log of c to the base a is equal to b suppose i have 2 power 5 2 power 5 is equal to 32 then log of 32 to the base 2 is equal to 5 hmm? this is the definition of logarithm log of 32 to the base 2 is equal to 5 okay so if you understand this then can you tell me what is log of 8 to the base 2 don't tell me you write in your notebook and then you send me snapshot okay this is my number if you are working and you are having any doubts please message i will help you Okay, log of 8 to the base 2 is how much? Log of 100 to the base 10 is equal to how much? Log of 10 power 5 to the base 10 is equal to how much? Log of 0 0.1 to the base 10 is equal to how much? Log of 1 by 4 to the base 2 is equal to how much? okay so i will answer these five questions today and then we stop for the day three four and five those of you who have understood it great those of you who have not let's have patience and we'll learn it okay so do you know or do you understand that eight eight is equal to two cube so do you understand that two power three is equal to eight so if 2 power 3 is equal to 8, then by definition, log of 8 to the base 2 is equal to 3. So log of 8 to the base 2 will be equal to how much? 3. So here, you just have to think 10 power how much is equal to 100. Hmm? So obviously, it will be square. So 10, so 2. Here, I have already answered it. It is equal to? 5. Now here log of 0.1 to the base 10. So 0.1 to the base 10. So this is how much? 0.1 is how much? So do you understand that 10 power minus 1 is equal to 0 0.1? So if 10 power minus 1 is equal to 0 0.01 then log of 0 0.1 to the base 10 is equal to how much? Minus 1. 1 by 4. This is equal to 2. Means how much? Do you see, do you understand that 2 power minus 2 is equal to 1 by 2 squared, which is equal to 1 by 4. So this is equal to minus 2. Hmm? So do you get it? Okay, so don't worry, think about it. Next class, we will do more of logarithms and then uh, slowly we will take up physics okay so this is all the maths that you need to know before we learn physics some of it you need for chemistry also the logs before we use in physics they'll be using in chemistry so we are just learning it now yeah okay good bye work hard think think sit down at home and think that is the most important thing you can do okay so Few more questions, sir. Your handwriting is not clear. Which part handwriting is not clear? Answers are in order. Three, two, five, minus one. Okay, very good. Then, uh, yeah, minus one. Okay. Show the slide with logarithm definition. I will. I will show. Sir, log of eight to the base two is three. Yes. Yes. Okay. So good. You guys are getting it. I will also see which part handwriting is not clear. I will improve it. I hope this sheet is very clear. Yeah, this sheet may be. So what I am saying is that if a power b is equal to c, then by definition, this is the definition of log. This is how logs are defined. Then log of c to the base a is equal to b. So you have to just think a to the power b is equal to c. Yeah, so when I asked you log of 32 to the base 2, you have to think 2 power how much is 32? Only thing remember where A has to be a positive number not equal to 1 and C also has to be a positive number. Hmm? So the C also has to be a positive number. Now you see 
suppose you have minus 2 power 3 is equal to minus 8. Now you can't write log of minus 8 to the base minus 2 is equal to 3. You can't write this. Why? Because by definition, this number should be positive and this number should be positive. Okay, so they are not positive. So you can't write it this way. Okay, so yeah, this way. Don't worry. We will start from here again next week and we will learn. Till then, keep thinking and keep working. Bye, bye. Okay, can you show, hey, if I've shown the slide from the beginning, show first slide, first slide I will show. Here is the first slide. Here is the second slide. Here is the third slide. Here is the fourth slide. Here is the fifth slide. Here is the sixth slide. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven, Okay, bye.